All right, so let's get started on why we are here. So we are an IT major, and what do we do with networking? We need to know how and why <coughs> networks are designed. Okay, That is the whole sort of basics of this class of what we're going to do. So for how, this is what are the devices, and then how are they connected. And we will spend most of our time talking about this. The why is really the most important thing, and this is why we're in the business school, is that is what are the user's needs? Okay. So what do the users need? And once we know what they need, then we need to say, what kind of network are we going to design? In that way, a network project is an analysis and design. OK? So analysis is the why. The design is the how. So we're going to follow the system development life cycle. Those of you that have had systems development or analysis already, you should understand, you know, we have this requirements analysis phase. So if I'm buying like my home router and I'm thinking, I would like to upgrade. I've heard a lot about upgrading to 802.11ac. So that's my question. Do I want to upgrade it? And I have to do things like, what are my needs? Analysis, OK. So I can do my needs analysis and decide, what do I actually need? Is this something I really need? I'm going to do a cost-benefit ratio, just like we learn in finance or accounting, and decide, is it worth it? Then I need to decide, what parts am I going to upgrade? If I'm just going to stick to the actual router, that's, one, that's a limitation on my scope, right? Hopefully you understand about scope. So this is a full project. I'm not going to walk through the rest of it, but obviously I'm going to buy my router, and then I have to configure it, implement it, and get it in place. And so it's not so simple as buy a new router, OK? It's not just buying a new router and then you're done. We understand, and that's one of our big benefits as IT majors in the business school, is we understand that there's, no, there's more to this than just the technology. It's a system, OK? So keep that in mind as we do it. The next thing is, I need you to remember is networking, we'll just put is everywhere. So think about playing, well, we all understand things like if I'm going to do ordering online, the network plays a big role in that. Not just between me and let's say Amazon, but within Amazon. So I put me here and I go to Amazon. I need to understand there's lots of networking going on at Amazon in order to get my order back and forth and working. But it's even in other really kind of stupid apps. So if your kid or my kids play this game where you have this bird head, so I'm going to throw a bird head at a pig. Okay, so there's a bunch of pigs and I got to throw a bird head at them. Now, we all understand, hopefully, that just should fit in my little iPad or I whatever I'm doing here. Okay, it should be self contained. Oops, contained. I, don't know, I can't even spell. Sorry. 
It should, in theory, be self-contained. I mean, really, all the calculations of throwing a bird head at a pig, it should be all contained within that one application. But, and there's always a but, right? You've got to have the network here. Because no one on Earth is going to implement any application that doesn't do, for example, the high score, or well, what was it, achievement. You know, how are you going to keep track of achievements? Well, I don't want people to cheat and hack into their game, and so I'm going to store the achievements on a server. At that instant, now I have a networking game. I'm going to have to put networking code in, and now it's time to deal with networking on, the, on that particular platform. So that's fun. So networking is all over the place. Now, who are the players in the game? For the most part, an IT major just uses the technology, we better put, we'll say implements, as we make a system, okay? So we're going to buy all the pieces and parts as a major and put them together, connect them together, configure them to make this whole system. There are other people that play here, and I just want to note who they are because they're actually very valuable. Let me do these guys first. Electrical engineers is someone that you might not really think about being important to anything. Okay? They're, they have a big role in designing computers, and since I'm not a computer designer, I don't really know what they do. But I do know what they do in networking. In networking, they do what's called signaling. Okay? Signaling is just the act of getting a bit sent from point A to point B. Okay? So if I put A here and B over here, and I might do something really fun. Oh, I don't have a good pen. That's okay. So I have a little fire going here, and it puts off smoke, right? Okay. If I put a blanket over the fire and hold it there for a second, there will be a gap in the smoke, and there will be a big poof, and then a little poof, right? Okay. And B might be over here looking and see, oh, big poof, that's a 1. Little poof, that's a 0. Okay. So this is signaling. And you know you guys want to get on this, right? Smoke signaling. And there's somewhere out there, we're all nerds, right? We can say the word nerd. Somewhere out there, there's nerds that have already figured out, like, I'm going to automate smoke signals and be able to communicate over like, great distances. I tell you this because there was someone that was doing vaporized vodka. And so they would evaporate. They would take their bottle of vodka. Can't draw a good bottle, sorry. There's the vapors coming off. And somehow they're getting the vapors of vodka, like through a pipe. This is insane. And then when it comes out the other end, so here's A, and then here's B. Sure enough, they're doing like one zero one one zero one one. Okay. So I tell you, and it was automatic. So there's you know a heater down here. I don't know what they're doing. And then over here, there's like a light sensor whatever they're doing. But anyway, they have some way of automatically getting ones and zeros out of a thing of vodka. I don't know if these were electrical engineers, by the way. But they do light. So there's light transmission and detection. And this is about detection. Well, So they can do on or off. They also do electricity electricity. This is usually uh, it's usually positive or negative. And then they also do radio. So what we use for wireless, that usually is some crazy stuff. I'll just put crazy stuff here. Okay. Electricity is pretty easy to explain. Uh, light's obviously really easy to explain. The radio is like, well, I don't know. So that's electrical engineering. And again, we want to go across a distance. 
So we love electrical engineers because they're the ones that get the bits between point A and point B. We'll worry about what else goes into it as we go, but the CS people, I better put computer science, right? The computer science folks, they're all about protocols. Protocols is going to be how bits are arranged. Okay, so you're going to order bits together to kind of make a message that makes sense. And they also do device programming. Okay, and so they're the ones that write the applications. If I bring up my little device here. So I have my little ports on here, right? It's, I can't look at the screen like that. And what sometimes I want things to go, for example, something might need to come in this port and then it needs to come out this port. Well, there needs to be a computer program inside here that does the logic of how to get it around these ports, okay? We are going to learn a little bit about all of this. So I'm not going to make you a CS or an electrical engineer. I'm going to make you an intelligent user of this We aren't really users, are we? And I can't put intelligent designer, can I? Intelligent architect, that's a good one. Isn't that from the Matrix? The architect, anyway. All right, so that's us. We work in, in what we'll call an end user organization. Organ, organization, okay? So the computer science people, those people work for equipment vendors. So this is like Cisco, Microsoft, that kind of stuff, okay? We work in the end user organizations. We're working for banks. Uh, what do we have? Food processing. I'm trying to think of our major industries here. We do have defense people. Um, shipping, that's a good one. Shipping. Um, what do we call this? Um, shipbuilding. We'll just put etc. Okay. So all this stuff goes around like we're totally slotted into this because these people all use, I would say technology, but we'll put, well, let's put technology. But for them, they are systems. Okay. Oops, I just made a little mess. Isn't that sad? All right. So we're the big time people. All right, just to give you another little sense of why networking, like why would we have this class be required? Let's say I am just a developer, okay? All I ever do is write code all day. If I only write code all day, in a magical world, I wouldn't need to worry about networking at all. But that magical world is long since past. In the old days, we had what was called sneaker net. And all we had to worry about was we could write to a disk and we could read from a disk. And once we had figured that out, us programmers were geniuses. Nowadays, it's very sad though, you have to know networking, right? If I'm writing a, net a program now, it's going to access a network in some way, okay? So what happens if your networked app breaks, OK? 
Okay, so I might write a networked app and it breaks. And what do we mean by breaks? Well, the user can't get some amount of work done. Say I'm going back to my throwing the bird head thing right here. And what happens if there's a bug in the achievements code that suddenly when someone finishes a game, the whole, com the whole program crashes? I got a serious problem, right? the network is completely destroying my game or the network code and so I need to be able to find out where is the problem okay is this on the user's device we'll just put user versus server or is it something inside my code that's written on the server okay so there's lots of different problems I might have that I need to be able to diagnose there are also performance issues. Issues. One of them is the type of connection. And this is one of my favorites because I used to sit, and I have a watch here that has a second hand. Can you guys see that? I always remember my second hand because I used to sit and I would type in when I, I was making a report. This is in Visual Basic. So I was going from a VB client, I was hitting the database, I'll just put a DB, and then I was getting the response back. And I was trying, you would not believe how many different ways there are to connect. But it was funny, when I got done, I had some reports that took you know, 30 seconds and some that took 5 seconds, just based on a different kind of connection. And we'll talk about those kinds of, or some of the ideas you can think of as we we get into that stuff. It actually comes up pretty early. So that's just one reason if you're just a, if you think, okay, I'm just going to code and develop stuff. Now, obviously, if I'm in networking, I'm going to need to know networking, and so I'm not going to tell you why networking people need to know this, but there you go. Um, if we're a project manager, and this is one of my big pet peeves, remember a project manager is, we'll just say they are gathering and coordinating talent. So a project manager needs to get the right people together and then get them working together in such a way we can get that project working. Now in the old days, and none of you are going to do this anymore, they used to forget the network people. because they were so concerned just about how well the system or the code worked together they didn't think this code needs to work across a network. If you forget the network you might find that the load on the network I'll just put destroys you may find that if you have your network on just the developers little subnet that you'll never know that when you get onto the real corporate network and there's a fair amount of load on that network that your application may freeze crash just not work just as an example you may have heard of the Obamacare website At the time it came on, on October 1st, of course it was a complete disaster, right? One of the things they had to do was they had to switch their ISP. They changed, they were using Verizon and I don't remember who they changed to, but the load on the network was so much between just the users trying to get to them, the load of users having that little delay to get to them on the Verizon network was so bad that that was part of the reason they were crashing all the time. By moving to this other ISP, that ISP was better able to handle the traffic and so the application stayed up or it didn't crash for as many people. So you might have the load on your network destroying your system or your system might destroy everyone else. So these are just sort of simple So you might put your system on the network and it starts crashing other people's applications. These are two really simple ones, but it really is kind of complicated when you start getting into it. And the bottom line here, and I didn't mention it on the developer one, is we'll put here security 
with a big question mark. Did you consider it or is it enough? Okay. Two months ago, if you talked to Target and you said, hey, how's your security on your credit card information? They'd probably say, yeah, it's probably okay. But today, we'll put two question marks. Today, they're probably not so sure. So security is a fun little issue, and we're happy with that. Okay. So this is sort of why we need security. Let's just think for a second about specialization. Okay. When I started in networking, it used to be that you would know I knew how to do cables. I could do the netware. This is in the old, old days. Client and the server. Actually, I wasn't very good at netware. I could do the Microsoft client and the server. And so I knew everything. It's not like that anymore. It turns out, by the way, that no one is what we will call a generalist. You really need to get a specialist in almost all of these. I didn't know when I started, but I was doing cabling completely wrong. So that was fun. So there's cabling, and if I'm going to go with a cabling specialist, there might be a cabling specialist that does unshielded twisted pair inside of buildings. Okay? And that's what they specialize in, and they will do it right. They're not like me who knew all this stuff, a little bit about everything, and did everything just a little bit wrong, or not all the way right. So there's people that specialize just inside buildings. There's also people that obviously, if I said inside buildings, there's also outdoor people. That's what Verizon uses. So the guys that drive around in the Verizon trucks that are messing around with stuff on the, what are those called, telephone poles? That's outside unshielded twisted pair. We also know there's other kinds of cabling, right? There is fiber optic cable. There's also, what about wireless? And then there's also coaxial cable. So there's a, someone, you know, the Verizon people that does unshielded twisted pair outdoors is a different person than the person that does fiber outdoors. And they're different people than the people from Cox that do coaxial cable outdoors. So there's lots of specialization going on in networking. And the specialization goes everywhere. The one I worry the most about is the security one. The problem with security is it's easy to be a specialist, for example, on a server. We'll put file server. So I might know everything there is about file server security, and I can make sure that the right people have access to your files. Okay. That's a whole different ball game than, let's say, database security. That's a whole different ball game than on the client side. Does anyone work on a, a Windows workstation that's really locked down? You know, you can't install things. You might not be able to change certain settings. There's client security. There's obviously a web server security. And hopefully, if I was getting together my project team that was doing a web application, I'm going to pull in the database expert and I'm going to pull in the web server expert, right? But here's the thing. Those people would know about the database security and the web server, but they would not know about the web, we'll call it a web system security. And there's someone that needs to be able to specialize in that. So how a web server is tied to a database is a completely new security issue than if you treat the database as a separate thing from the web server. This is insane, right? And it has to be secure every step in the process. It hasn't come out, by the way, how they hacked into Target, or now it's Neiman Marcus got hacked too. So they haven't figured out what exactly was going on. 
So that's fun. Lots of specialization. So what we're doing here is I want to provide you <coughs> we need a conceptual view and I'm going to give you enough of a practical overview of networking. Okay? I want to get you started but I want to emphasize here, when you're done, we're going to talk a lot about security, but you're not going to be a security expert, or you better not think you are because you're gonna just going to have problems, okay? Hopefully, you'll know enough to know that you don't know it all when we get done with most pretty much all of this stuff. So you'll be able to configure your own home network, secure your wireless network hopefully well enough, and then from now, from there, you can move on. All right.